When building reports, your data should never just sit on a screen. It should try to tell a story. But how do you transform your Power BI dashboards into compelling stories that can drive action? Well, my name is Mattia and I've been trying to make data tell a story for over 12 years. Today, I'll show you how with the help of Zebra BI, I was able to achieve that and transform my dashboard to not just present data, but also tell the story that answers the why and what to do next. So let's build one of these dashboards together. So let's start with our KPIs. We usually put our KPIs here on the left side of our canvas. And let's try to do this now with, of course, the cards visual. On the left, I'm going to be building with Microsoft's own Power BI cards. And then on the right, I'm going to be using Zebra BI. So when adding the cards, we can see we have one field here and we can just drag and drop our actual data. And that's it. The card is done. Now for the Zebra BI cards. If we choose Zebra BI cards, you're going to see even the first big difference is that we have many more data fields on the right. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And right now we can just add to the values our actuals, just like before. There we go. And right now, not much has changed, but we're just adding our other measures for, let's say, previous year. And for plan, things change a lot. Now in just a couple of clicks, we've turned just a simple representation of a number, so 8.77 million, into something that we can actually use to tell a story. So we can actually tell that 8.8 .8 million is actually better than we were previous year. And it's also something that is above plan. Already our story has a great beginning, but we can take this even further. We can add, since we have more data fields, we can add our groups, our KPIs to groups, just like this. And now we have our all of our most important KPIs here represented, not just with a number, but also with some graphical representation. Now, to be honest, we can do a bit of the same with the new Microsoft card, which gives us a little bit more data fields to populate. And we can actually use the, the previous year and our plan measure right here. And we can even add our KPI to categories. But I think you'll see that the difference between one and the other is quite impactful. So if here we would have to do all the calculations ourselves to understand exactly what's going on, Zebra BI does all of this for us. And this is also why we use so many of these placeholders, because now in the background, Zebra BI can understand what our actual is, what our previous year is, and how to calculate between them. Just one important thing here. I understand that we can add something similar to what we see in Zebra BI cards to the new cards as well, with the help of some DAX measures and a little bit of work. However, for this video, I wanted to focus on creating something pretty quickly if we don't have maybe the knowledge to do complicated DAX or if we just don't have the time to do all the necessary calculations that we want to do. But we still need to tell the story. We need to show what the data is showing. So if you want to see a more in-depth comparison between our cards and the native cards, check out this video. It's going to be linked in the description down below. So for our matchup number one, I think that we would choose Zebra BI cards. So now that we have our winner, let's go into the cards and look at them a little bit closer. Since this is our most important KPIs, we can see that we also have to change the cross margin into the percentage because of course this is something that's calculated. And then with a simple click of a button here, we can change even the visualization type. We can also change the card that we're looking at with a simple push of this button right here. There we go. Okay. And one thing that we have to do is invert the costs just like that. And now we are showing the true story behind our data. Let's move our cards up to the top left where they're supposed to be. Next, we're going to want something that's going to show us our trends. So let's try with a clustered column chart, which is right here. 
there we go from Microsoft and let's add in all of our all of our data so our actuals like that then our previous year our plan and then of course on the x-axis we're gonna want our months there we go okay this is pretty interesting now let's try to do the same thing with zebra bi charts there we go okay we got our charts right here i'm just going to reposition them a little bit make them a little bit smaller so it's fair and now again see we have a lot of placeholders here again we're going to put our actuals under values we're going to use we're going to put our previous year under our previous year and we're going to use our plan under plan and then also up with our categories we're also going to use our calendar just like we did before there we go oh and the difference is quite obvious already but of course if i click here on the visualization you're going to see that we're going to break the axis and we can actually see how we're doing versus our plan with again the variance is already calculated and see this this is the important part i don't think that i could get a story out from this chart or if i would i would need a lot of time to do it i don't really know the trend i can't really see it it's too many colors it's it's just something that would maybe confuse me more than anything else here with Zebra BI, I can also change the chart type to something like this, an integrated variance chart, where I think that the differences between one and the other are very obvious. So here again, I think there's no competition. I think I'd use Zebra BI. And also, if I make the chart a little bit larger, you can see that Zebra BI is going to give me even more information. So not just the comparison to plan that we had before, but also to previous year, and not only the absolute variances, the relative ones as well. So I can really make a story to understand exactly what's going on in the background. So now if I do a bit of a deep dive on our data, I can already see that, okay, we have 8.8 .8 million of revenues and our plan and versus our plan, we are 1.3% above it. Well, that's not much. And I can see that although we have quite a lot of green here, right, especially here in November, we can see that we had quite a few dropping months, especially during summer and, of course, in uh, February and March. So these are definitely some of the months that we should take a bit of a look at and understand where things have been going wrong. Now, we also can look at, of course, November and keep the story a little bit more upbeat and say that, hey, things that we're doing in November really helped us and we should do this more. But to really understand what's going on, we're going to go away from our trend charts and now we're going to have to use something that's going to go a little bit deeper, maybe into a different category like our business units. And for that, we're going to need some tables. First of all, let me make the chart a little bit smaller, just like that. And because of the responsive design, you can see that in our chart, our data density is still pretty high. We're going to start with the matrix visual. We're going to add it in right here, make it a little bit larger, of course. And then into our rows, we're going to add our business units. And for our values, of course, our actual and our plan data. Good. This looks like a nice table, but now let's see what Zebra BI tables can do. So we're going to add Zebra BI tables right here to the right, like we usually do. And again, we can see we have quite a lot of placeholders again. So under our categories, of course, we're going to put our business units and then under values, our actuals and under our plan we're going to put our plan data there we go and you can see that just like i think i can close both of these now and as you can see again in zebra bi we have the variances and we also have these added visualizations and of course now we can clearly see that our 1.3 percent 
increase of revenue could have been a lot higher if we took care of our most important category, our most important business unit, which is baby care. And of course, we have to thank the our wearable speakers and hair care and tablets for the increases that we see. So I think again, the winner is clear. Let's move the Zebra BI tables here to the left underneath our KPI cards, just like this, make them a little bit bigger. And then what we can also do is we can use some more storytelling features that Zebra BI has, which is, let's say the top and bottom end. If we just click this, we can then choose to have our top end, let's say in focus mode 20 and in edit mode five, that's gonna be okay. And we're just gonna see look five of our most important business units and maybe let's just add a couple of more just like that there we go about eight now we can focus on the ones that are bringing the highest impact to our business and not the ones that are simply not bringing in the money that we need now let's make the trend chart a little bit bigger and with this we have our storytelling dashboard absolutely completed. So our dashboard is complete and the only thing I've done behind the scenes is I've suppressed the charts on our cards because I think this just makes it look a little bit more clean. Now let's put the story together. So as we know, our revenues are 1.3% above plan, which is great, but when looking at our business units, we could see that our baby care is, of course, not performing as well as you would want, or it's just concerning that our biggest business unit is about 5.5% below plan. If we click on it, of course, we are going to, just like expected, cross-filter all of the other visuals, and now we can see that there's definitely something going on here in a couple of months, and since we know our business and we have great business analysts and product managers, we already know what to attribute this change to. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some annotation, add a dynamic comment that we can add directly on any of our data points and we're gonna put it right here and we're just gonna write what happened and since we know it was strong competition by a new budget competitor that is periodically winning against us with strong promotion. So why we're doing this is not just to understand our data today, but also understand the actions that we have to take in the future to make sure that things like this don't happen again. Now that you saw how easy it was to turn simple numbers into a data story, just with the help of Zebra BI, you can start your free trial at zebrabi.com or find the link in the description below. Thank you for watching this video, Data Wizards, and we'll see you next time.